Okay, so over here we have Windows 8, the developer build 64 bit version, which I downloaded and I have installed. It's currently dual booting with my existing Windows 7 installation. Actually, it's triple booting because I have Ubuntu installed also. So, I'm gonna start with the start menu. So, this is the start, and it's it's basically looks like the Windows 7 phone. It has got tiles, these are live tiles. This is my, as you can see, this is the Twitter application. Then there is the weather app. The practically, the weather app is the best in my opinion. I mean, this is currently the city that I live in and this is the other city for which this video is based for. I mean, the main audience for which this video is for. I mean, this is just, simply great the interface the looks it's practically nice the only thing that the issue that i found currently with my experience was that crappy interface it's basically designed for a touch screen i mean you cannot just use it with the mouse or settings i'm currently still exploring so i'm gonna explain and show you what i know as, as and when i explore it myself i'm gonna start with the internet explorer you can see that's the Internet Explorer. On clicking, right clicking, we get the new tab options where you can visit the history or the print apps. I'm gonna go. You can see the bar. It's just simply awesome. I right click it, you get more options. I'm going back to the start menu. This is the control panel. Uh, not to mention that this on during the setup, it asked me for my Windows Live ID. So what? Currently, I don't know how it works offline, but if you have internet connection, it will log in using your Windows Live ID, user ID, and password. You can personalize. You can personalize the lock screen. You can change your photo. You can see how many users you have. You can create a pin login for offline user users, I guess. Oh, that's cool. I haven't noticed it yet. You can go into airplane mode. You can select Wi-Fi on or off just just by dragging it. See these notifications. You just simply drag to see the notifications are present or not. And there are much more ex settings which we can explore later on. This is the socialize socialite app which I use it to log in onto my Facebook account. So this is my news feed. Uh, you can see this is my current news feed that is displayed live. I can just simply click on a post and a detailed post along with comments and such stuff will be displayed on the right hand side. Mm. This is my profile. What I uploaded. These are my photo albums and stuff. Ah, it's taking time to load. We're gonna leave it because we're just socializing app. This is Twitter. This is another nice app. You can just like post. And there you go. I made just I just made a tweet. You can go basically but this this interface appears when you press the start menu. You can you may not use a mouse, you can directly type the application which you want to search. So, everything. Okay. This is an amazing search tool. I use it. It's just awesome. I installed Fraps, but Fraps is currently not working. Settings. This is the store store is currently not available, it is not available in the developer base. There's, an, there's another feature which I noticed that if you just take it on the any corner of the screen and just keep it driving on that side of the screen, it, it shows the previous app that you have opened. So previously I had opened the Windows store, so here is it. Now when I just click it, it just slides away. 
and when I keep it pressed and I drag it, I can just load it onto the sidebar. Now here on the sidebar is my desktop showing which current windows app are there. On clicking it, it maximizes and the app gets on the left. And the app which was open gets minimized. Now this is the windows tab feature. It's just simply amazing. I'm pressing Alt Escape. I get this amazing desktop of mine. You can see the effect. Now, other thing I want to show is the awesome task manager. I started up the task manager using this keyboard shortcut. Control Shift Escape. If you don't know, this is a useful tip. I'm gonna close some of the apps. That I don't need. Okay. So, see, as you can see, I'm getting my Twitter app. I'm just gonna load it onto one of the sidebars. There, yeah, it's done. And I can also log it, uh, log it into my social app. Yeah, it's simply amazing. Another thing is like if you wanna not use your keyboard for all tabbing or windows tabbing, you can just take your mouse to any of the corner and just drag it like this. As if it's a touchscreen touch interface. You can do it from the left side. Ah, I'm gonna do it from the left side. Nevertheless, it's an awesome app application. It's not an application, actually, it's an interface. Another thing that I noticed is when you load an app, you can right click it and it shows you more often, like refresh, logout, or if you are on the Facebook, it just shows you like if you want to pin it or go to the home screen or not. For some unknown reasons, my profile picture is not coming up. I don't know why. This is default. Tip. Don't worry. Yes, these are the photos. And I've checked out some of the apps. Or I haven't checked out any of the most of the apps. These are the alarm apps. You can add alarm. Uh, let's come on. Let's check out some. Oh, this is another. This is another cool app. It's called Flashcards. They are just basically a digital version of the flash flashcards that you're gonna use. So Way to go! Oh, it just said to me where to go. Then. There's another app called Memories. Actually, I'm looking at it for the first time, so let's see what is it. Oh, this is a cool app. Oh, you can make a digital scrapbook or stuff. Or stuff. Oh, you can basically a photo album sort of thing. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, this is the Flickr API. That's cool. Oh, live slideshows. That's nice. There's a tile puzzle game. Basically, you need to solve it. Nah, I'm gonna go. There's a notes space app. It's basically a note taking app where you can write down notes. So that's cool. I'm gonna try it. All right, there's a whole entire whole new interface. Okay, I tap in here. Oh, that's cool. So you can do loads of stuff. Mm, there's nothing much to look at it. Just come on, let's check out the aircraft app. I don't know what is it, but we're gonna do it. Mm, this is the task manager, it's awesome. If you click more details, you get the detailed information of how much CPU, factor, and other stuff. Memory, you can sort it by memory, you can sort it by process. This is the performance. Show your CPU, memory performance, disk performance. 
to show the network usage currently i'm not using any internet it's good for me this shows the app history oh that's cool this shows the startup application these are the users that are currently logged in and these are the details and these are the services that are started so you can go so that's about it about the start menu the only irritating thing is that it's designed for touch and not for mouse usage not to for i forgot to mention another thing like when you take your mouse to the bottom left corner you get this amazing pop up where you can check your devices settings you can just see what the setting for the desktop so you can enable or disable notification you can change the brightness and stuff you can change the volume you can see the devices that are correct currently there i'm sorry i'm just so you can share the screenshot and stuff so that's cool so if you want to share a screenshot is just simply like click and share oh that's cool i'm using the crappy classic print screen control paste on the ms print thingy you can search directly from here to file settings and stuff these are the list of apps that are currently installed by default and which i'm going to install in the future Now let's talk about the Windows Explorer. This is the Windows Explorer. You have the right preview pane. Forget about the preview pane. Just my computer. You can map network drive. This is a ribbon interface, like they call it, or at least I hope what they call it. Um, now, as you can see, when I clicked on the any of my drive, you get disk tools where you can format, clean up, optimize the drive. So basically, you know, right clicking and formatting and stuff. I'm gonna go back to the previous folder, and these are the text files. Currently, the CS some CSS files for the Thunder theme that I have. I'm clicking it on the preview. I just get the plain preview directly, the text file. For some unknown reason, I cannot drag and select, but I can do it with the keyboard by pressing Shift and the right or the left arrow, and I can copy. And while I just done, you can see there are movies also. I can just simply live preview. I just need to select it. Let's check out some movie. Come on. Okay. Okay. Grant access. Okay. Let's open another. Let's see. Now check out the green house. Let's select the video. And there we go. We got a live preview. Oh, crap box. This is the movie that goes. Another thing that I noticed is the amazing right click option. Which you can share with it someone or even the specific people you can include in the library and send to. Or you can just press shift right click and you can get more options. I like this option of copy as path. It's very helpful. Now I'm gonna try to copy some random files over, say, in a new directory over here. The copy option is just simply amazing. You can see you can get the detail of speed, how it's increasing. You can pause your copying process. You can resume it. You can make it look fewer details, and it just works. It just simply blindly, smoothly works. If you are copying more files, you get more bars in the same window in instead of two three windows. Let's check that out. I guess the developer base taking some time has been happening for me since the beginning of time. I can say that. Let's say I want to copy Marvel comics. The new folder. And that folder was empty. This is my bad luck. All right. 
it pauses so we can check out the other option You can see I got the delete pop up right over there. I'm gonna resume copying this. I'm gonna paste this one thing. So, as you can see, there's override options. You can select whether you want to override copy all files or just select the old file from the other, and you can just continue. And these are the two copying, two copying processes that are going on simultaneously. Okay, I'm gonna cancel that. Otherwise, the rest of the stuff is the default stuff is just simply amazing. You're gonna love it if you like the interface that they have provided. This is the Windows tab. This is the Windows tab that I'm getting. I'm currently event tabbing and not all tabbing. Okay, this is the all tab. This is the puzzle. On pressing control plus escape, I get the mouse. On pressing all the escape, I get redirected to the desktop see this anyways I hope this you like this preview of the video and I'm way about 17 minutes so I'm gonna try to see if I can get anything more in 20 minutes and Java oh let's check out Windows Media Player basically the same oh, it's probably in fact it's 12 but it practically looks the same to me as like the 11 this is Windows Explorer 10 Internet Explorer 10 sorry you may have noticed that these corners are inst instead of being smooth, smooth they are like sharp edges there is something that I can get used to but I'm finding it difficult from transition to that I've transitioned from Windows 7. Let's see how it works out. 